The next part of the required requires us to post the totals at the end of the month to the relevant accounts in the general ledger. So we've got our purchases journal, we've got our purchases returns journal. Let's go and post these to the general ledger. So let's start off with our purchases journal. Again, we start off and we make sure that we get our numbering right, we make sure that we get our folios right and all the details so that if something goes wrong, your examiner always knows where to go back to to see what it is you're actually doing. So that input for us is going to be an item that goes into our statement of financial position. It reduces my VAT liability. So that is always going to get a B. And since this is the very first one I'm dealing with, it's going to be a B1. Purchases, on the other hand, is going to be a nominal account that gets an N1 that goes to our profit and loss. And your creditors control is also our liability. So that's a get it gets a B2. So let's go put these in immediately. We've got 301. Sorry, 301, 2150, and 2451. Let's go and build our general ledger. The first item and the first account I've got is my VAT input. And I said I was numbering that B1. Which side this goes on? This reduces my VAT liability. So this is going to go to my debit side. It reduces my VAT liability. If I can claim VAT on purchases, it means that I can get VAT back on purchases. That is a good thing, which means when I take all the money that I have to pay for the receiver, he says, yes, but that's fine. I will take 14% of your sales, but I'm going to allow you to take all of your purchases off of that. So we debit that and make sure you understand that. It is at the end of the month, the 30th of November. It's going to come from our purchases journal one and the amount here was 301, my VAT input. My next account was my purchases. Wow, it looks terrible. My purchase, my purchases was N1. Purchases is an expense and expenses increase on the debit side. So we've got our expense here. And again, creditors control is where the other side of this account goes. Uh, my purchase journal one and the amount there is 2150. The next account I need is my creditors control account to show how much I owe my creditors. And that's going to be called and named B2. And this is a liability. Liabilities increase on the credit side. So we have the 30th of November and we have purchases from PJ. <laughs> PJ1. And the amount there is 2451. 301 plus 2150 is going to give me my 2451. So therefore my debits and credits balance. Again, just to make sure we're clear on this, all of these transactions could be done in the journals with a general journal, with a journal, which means the debits and the credits we'd be able to do without having to do a general ledger or without having to do a purchases journal. And if we take a look at that, what would it look like? Well, purchases are expenses and their expenses increase on the debit side. So purchases, my 2150 would be my debit. My VAT input goes on exactly the same side as my purchases and it decreases my VAT liability and that is 301. And my creditors control is my liability. And liabilities increase on the credit side, 2451. So if we were to represent this with a journal, that is how it would look in a little bit better handwriting, but that is how it would look. And you see that our general ledger, the debits and credits of our general ledger has basically mirrored that. So when you're looking at these types of journals, it does help to try and think in debits and credits when you are looking at these items to make sure that you know what it is that you're doing. We have posted all of these. We have told them exactly which numbers we've referenced everything so we go to our purchases returns journal that input I already have an account for that input so I have b1 <clears throat> purchases re returns I have not created yet so I create n2 for that and creditors control I already do have so I can use the same account so let's go and post those items my that input <clears throat> 
if I am returning goods to my creditors, if I'm returning goods that I have purchased, it means that I won't be able to claim that VAT, which means it's going to increase my liability again, which means it goes on my credit side. So on the 30th of November, also goes to creditors control. This comes from my PRJ1 and the amount here was 42. Purchases I'm not using at this point in time. My creditors control is going to be decreasing. If I'm returning their goods to them, it means my liability is going to be decreasing. So this then is my purchase return. Also 30th of November because we're doing all of this on the last day at the end of the month once we've totaled everything. PRJ1 and the amount there 300 and oops, 42 rand. The next account I need is my actual purchases returns account because I only have my purchases at this point in time. And this I said I'm numbering in two because my only other profit account at the moment is in one. So my purchase returns decreases my expenses, which means I'm going to put that on the credit side. 30th of November, my credits is control, my comes from my PRJ one, and the amount there is 300. And those are my debits and credits. That then takes care of my purchases returns journal and my purchases journal. That means we have posted all of our accounts. The only thing that remains is to deal with our VAT. Post the entries above to the VAT input account and then close off the VAT input account to the VAT control account. Just the same as we did with sales and we closed off our VAT output account, we've got to keep in mind that my VAT account and my VAT control account is the account that takes into consideration or keeps track of how much you are going to be paying the receiver. The receiver says, I want 14% on all of your sales, but before you pay that to me, you can take off all the VAT that you've paid to someone else. So all of your VAT on your purchases. So my VAT control represents all my VAT output, less my VAT input. When we did the sales transactions, we did the sales example, we spoke about the VAT output and how to close that off. And now we're dealing with the other side of that, the VAT input. We need to close this off to the VAT control account as well, so we can make sure that we know exactly how much we owe the receiver. So our first thing we need to do is find out exactly what that amount is. My VAT input, this says that I'm reducing my liability by 301. So my total VAT at the moment, or the highest amount here is 301, but I have returned 42 rands worth of that. So that means that my 301, I cannot reduce my VAT liability by because I actually returned 42. So I need the difference between 301 and 42, and that is going to give me 259. That 259 gets passed in our general journal. Our general journal for November, again, please don't abbreviate. The only reason I'm doing it is because I'm not naturally right-handed. So you don't want to do that in an exam and get lose marks for that. So that's my GJ1. Now, when I'm closing this off, what I'm trying to do, oops, what I'm trying to do is say my VAT input account, I must get to zero. I must take everything out of my VAT input account and I must actually create a VAT control account. Because my VAT control account is where my VAT output will be sitting as well. And that will be B3 because my last one there was B2. So my VAT control account, I need to close it off to here, which means I need to take it out of here. At the moment, it's sitting with a net debit of 259. 301 less 42, 259, which is now sitting on my debit side. So in order to get this to zero, I would have to credit this account by 259. But I never post anything directly to my general ledger, never ever get into that bad habit. We never post anything in the general ledger without it going through some kind of journal. So we create a general journal for this. Again, it'll be on the last day of the month, the 30th of the month. And we say I am crediting my VAT input account in order to make it zero and that is with 259 Rand. My VAT control account will be debited then 
and that will also be debited with oops, 259 and this is the closing off or if you want the transfer of the VAT input to the VAT control account. Let me underline that. These little journal narratives that we call them are extremely important. These little journal narratives are very, very important because it tells people why you're passing that transaction. Just imagine you do a whole bunch of stuff and you're dealing with tons of transactions that happen on a daily basis, a weekly basis. When you come back two days later, you don't know why. You can't remember where you got the amount from. You can't remember why you passed that particular journal or why you did that. So we've got to make sure we keep track of this. How many times have you walked out of a lecture or you've gone, you know, you've studied or you've read something and you've made notes yourself. And when you come back three days later, you don't know why you made those notes because it's forgotten. Okay, your immediate memory forgets the stuff. So it makes sense to be quite specific about why you're passing that transaction. So when you come back and you look at it, you go, oh yes, that's what I was doing. My VAT input account, the folio number is B1. And my VAT control account is B3. So let's post that now to our general ledger. We've got a credit here of 259 in my VAT input. And the other side is going to my VAT control account. Remember, we always post in here where the other side of that transaction is going. So I can see exactly what other effect that has on the general ledger. That's on the 30th of November as well. That leaves me then with zero. If, if, I, if I have a 301 rands worth of transactions as a debit and 301 rands worth of transactions as a credit, it leaves me with a net zero just keep that in mind make sure you're aware of that and then obviously our debit amount or our debit account will be my vat control account 30th of november my details it's coming from my ugh, it's coming from my vat input account from my general journal one and the amount was 259 so <clears throat> we know then that the total that i can reduce my VAT amount of my VAT liability by is 259 in respect of the purchases that I have made. Again, if you want to make sure your debits and credits are sound, make sure you add up your debits and your credits in the general ledger and it'll give you an indication of whether or not your debits and your credits are right. So at this point, we've taken our VAT input completely out of this. So if we add up what's left, we've got 2751 and 2751. Our debits and our credits balance. Whether you see this as completely a net zero or whether you add the 301 in there, it's going to change your amount here. But what's most important, we need to make sure that they balance your debits and your credits balance. Pay very close attention to that little general journal. It's worth quite a few marks. Make sure that you're comfortable with that and make sure that you never get into the habit of posting directly to the general ledger. It always has to go through a journal first. Make sure that you're comfortable with the details. Make sure you've tried this yourself. I have given you a printed solution so you can take a look at it and make sure that your stuff is right. And obviously the, the handwriting is a little bit more, the amount in the handwriting is a little bit more legible in this one. But make sure that you're comfortable with your purchases journal as well as your purchases returns journal in terms of how you deal with that.